How are we doing today? What's going on, everybody? Hello, and welcome back to Days Gone. Yeah, you probably know this game if you're here tonight. So, let's get started right away. Let's say hello to the chat. Who do we have with us this evening? All right. Hey, wait a minute. I think my chat window's freaked out, right, as I'm trying to uh, say hello to folks. That's awesome. So, we're going to close that, fix that, hit that again, and right there. There we are. All right, so check it out, man. First one in the chat this evening was Mohammed. Mohammed, welcome in. What's going on, man? Next runner up is Jeremy McGee, my brother from another mother. What's up, Chair Bear? And Melissa S is with us. Hello, Melissa. Nylon Girl 92. Hello, everyone. Yeah, you heard me clicking around on the PlayStation. Uh, I was uploading Claire's uh, Fallout 76 save to the cloud uh, so she could play that uh, this evening. 
Uh, Jess Castaneda is with here is with us. What's up, Jess? How are you, man? Um, also, Violent Jones and Eight Bit Terror has entered the chat. Yeah, all right. So let's kick it off, man. Oh, wait, there's Thrash Monkey also. What's up, Thrash Monkey? Working and lurking. All right, well, thank you for being here. All right, so we're going to play some more Days Gone. And what we are doing today is more horde killing. Uh, so I'm going to load my late game save where we have everything unlocked and we can reset the hordes uh, from the main menu whenever we want to. And we'll start from there. I'll check it out. Viper Sniper is with us. Hello, Viper Sniper. That's a cool name. Uh, I like that username. And Scott is with us. Scott in. What's up, man? How are you, Scott? Welcome, welcome. Good to have y'all here this evening. I see the numbers ticking on up. Y'all come on in. Pull up a chair. Pour yourself a drink. Let's go kick some ass. And don't forget to like, if you would, please. Uh, or hit the thumbs down if you don't like it. That's cool, too. Um, the U YouTube's algorithm doesn't really care all that much as long as people are interacting with the video. I'm happy. Uh, and uh, make sure that you are on live chat or uh, all chat or whatever it is on your uh, on your platform that you're play, uh, watching on. Okay. So we are going to... We're going to show... Well, basically, we're just going to show a lot of horde killing, but it's going to include some of the more advanced tactics. Um, we're actually going to slow it down a little bit and break down what it is we're doing that makes horde killing look so easy. We'll, we'll talk about the mindset, the tactics, just the way of thinking that allows you to come up with effective tactics. Uh, oh, and hey, uh, Chasing Games is with us. What's up? Welcome, welcome. Hello. So, obviously, one of the big factors is your loadout. Um, the, the obvious choices are things like the Chicago Chopper. Uh, and I get asked all the time, what is the best loadout for Days Gone? Here's my, my professional opinion. The best loadout for Days Gone, whatever you're doing, is the Chicago Chopper in your primary. The SMP9 that is the horde killer version specifically. You can only unlock this version of the SMP9 by killing four hordes. Uh, and that's one of the things I show how to do in the early part of the game uh, in my unlock your SMP9 as early as possible video. Uh, and you can see I already have it equipped because that's pretty much the sidearm I always run with. Uh, once I discovered how good it is, I just always run with it. And then also the... the uh, level five condition here, the 50 cal sniper rifle. These yep. weapons together, the three of these specifically, make pretty much the most well-rounded loadout you could possibly wish for. Yes, there are guns that are arguably better in each slot. Uh, certain things you could put in each position that work better for different play styles or even different situations. But with these three weapons specifically, you can take out everything in the game. Anything that the game can throw at you, you can handle it with anything in the main game. Uh, because with your primary being the Chicago Chopper, you have an excellent spray and pray option that can also be fairly accurate, even at medium to long distance, you know, if you're pretty good with it. Um, and your SMP9 is also a decent spray and pray option and also extremely accurate even at medium to long range where your 50 cal sniper rifle is of course the deadliest and most accurate weapon uh at medium to extreme range uh so with these three you can cover everything you've got up close and personal spray and pray you've got medium to long spray and pray and you've got deadly accuracy over extreme distances as well uh, so I would say if you're looking for the best loadout in Days Gone or whatever, this would be it. The Chopper, the BFG, and the SMP9. Uh, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to show, uh, we're going to go murder some hordes. We'll kind of do Lost Lake area because as most of you already know, uh, the Cascades and Belknap, like let's take a look at the map here. The Cascades area around Mark Copeland's camp and the Belknap area around Tucker's camp. Uh, there are some sizable hordes in these areas, but they are all smaller. These are the smallest hordes in the game in this area. Anywhere from like 25 to what, 75? I, I think 
Pat Jen's Lake Horde is the biggest one up here in the northern two regions, and I can't even recall what it is. It's 75 to 100, something like that. Uh, somebody knows. Put it in the chat for me. Um, but those are smaller hordes, so we're going to do like some medium-sized hordes, and then we'll push forward to the southern regions, which have the big guys. Uh, the size of the Pat Jen's Lake Horde. 75, 100? Yeah, something like that. It, it's big, but not like crazy big. Mm hmm. It is 100 for the Pat Jen's Lake Ward. Thank you, 8 Bit Terror, host of the Days Gone podcast. <laughs> I told you somebody knew. She had, she literally has her uh, fuck schizo nerd notebook right here. This is, may I show the cover of this? Oh, yeah. yeah, right on. Check it out. These are available in, these are available in our merch store. I hope you can see that. I don't think the green screen is fucking with it or anything. Uh, but yeah, that's her fuck schizo Days Gone notes notebook. That's her actual journal that she takes notes in. Okay, so there are multiple hordes in this area. And like I say, with the loadout that we currently have, you can handle anything in the game. It's it's just absolutely sick. So like we can take these big guy uh, or you know, these are bleachers, I believe. Uh so they're slightly more powerful uh swarmers. So that was like the biggest weapon in the game. And then we have our, our primary rifle here. Let's get some elevation on them. Even it is fairly accurate at medium range. And even the sidearm here, the SMP9, is also extremely accurate. Even, even at, I would say, medium range there. So with these three weapons, there's nothing the game can throw at you that you can't handle. Up to and including the largest hordes in the game. Like, if I were doing the sawmill horde... I might swap out my BFG. I might swap it out for the MG55 or even the MG45 or the RPD if I just wanted to have a little more fun with it. Because uh, the MG55, you're just going to mow them down. Um, so, yeah, for like that, maybe the sawmill horde, I might swap out to a slightly bigger uh, a machine gun in the special slot. All right. So let's see, which horde do we want to do specifically? I think West Fur will go after them. This is one I have a lot of fun with. I should actually mark it. I haven't. Okay, map is this way. Thank you. I haven't actually played horde hunting just for the fuck of it in a while. All right, so if we want this horde, we're going this way. Right there. There's a lot of different ways to do this one. Uh, there are often marauders over here. And what I like to do is I like to post up with the sniper rifle and take these marauders out first. Um, just to kind of eliminate that variable. And so you don't have to deal with them while you're taking care of the horde over here. It looks like it's fairly quiet over there. We may actually uh, roll up on them. We'll roll up on this location over here to see if there's any action this way, and then we'll go check out the horde. Like, again, this is advanced tactics. If you want to make horde killing look easy or make it as easy as possible, you start by clearing the area and eliminating variables. Wow, that's interesting. As soon as we entered the building here, we got audio queued up for the horde. I wonder. It should be early morning still. Yeah, it's only 10.22 in the morning, so they shouldn't be out roaming around. Okay. So check this out. This is... I believe this is the way I killed this horde the very first time I ever encountered them. Because um, <clears throat> if you want to do it smart, you're looking for ways to get above them. I think one of my earliest videos was West Fur Horde Death From Above. And this is what we were doing. We come up here and we get above them. Uh, you should, yeah, you should be able to see they're directly below us now. And that's only like part of them. I think they're split into two halves of the cave. Yeah, there's another bunch right over here. So it, it's one thing about this horde is they're really kind of spaced out inside their cave. It's a really large cave and they're spaced out in there quite a bit. So what I like to do though, is I like to pull them out one way or another and what I normally use is a flashbang because I can use these, I can replace these from the uh, merchants in town easily. They're like a hundred credits each. 
And if I can take a look at this, uh, it, you, it will show you your credits. Uh, if you look down in the bottom left corner here, you can see with uh, the Lost Lake Camp, I have 134,931 credits. So, I mean, I can spend 100 credits to buy another flashbang. It, it doesn't matter. So, we use the flashbang to just make a little noise. This will get their attention and pull them out. It's I can throw these I can throw these away all day long. It doesn't matter. So just use a little noise, pull them out, and then you can set your attractor, which the attractor will actually sit there and tick for a few seconds, drawing them into that spot. And then you can use whatever you want. I recommend frag grenades because frag grenades can be purchased again for just 100 credits. They should all come out and start gathering up around my attractor. And once you get a little crowd down there, you make a little more noise, make a little more noise. You can even use some heavier firepower at this point if you want to, because you know you've drawn more of the horde out. Now they've aggroed on us and they're coming around the corner. That's okay. Let's draw them up a ways. Make a little noise so they know where to go. And make them come uphill at you. And make them pay for every step. Again, with this Chicago Chopper, the fire rate on this thing is insane. The magazine size is good. It can be upgraded to, I think, what what was it, 80? And just by pulling them up the hill and using, like, you know, pretty fairly judicious use of your firepower and the terrain and stuff, this is a fairly large horde, and that was, like, it was nothing. And what did it cost us? Done. Uh, it cost us... 300 credits and one napalm molotov. Uh, yeah, Westford. Hey. What do you guys think you are doing? Yes, I shot him in the right eye on purpose. All right. Let me see, that's the thing. This, uh, actually, maybe marauders did spawn down here. Or did they come from up here? They must have come from up here. They may have come from the ambush camp up here. But anyway, that's that's pretty much all there is to it, man. Take that, rinse, and repeat, you know? Uh, but let's go ahead and collect. Actually, we did use one attractor, so let me go ahead and craft another attractor, and we'll pick up this can off of this guy. Who was it that, that had the can for me? One of these marauders had a can for me. Yeah, this guy. All right, so let's take a moment to catch up with the chat. Uh, it is already popping, so let's I'll just do the best I can. I need to say hello to Zylock DNB, Thomas Cole, Dirt Pirate, and Captain Caffeine. Welcome in, folks. Welcome, welcome. Glad to have you all with us this evening. Uh, yeah, Muhammad, I see a question here. Uh, would an attractor and a flashbang make a decent stun? Yes, uh, it actually does. Uh, you could totally do that. Throw an attractor and then allow them to gather around the attractor then throw a, once they're gathered up nicely throw the flashbang in and it'll stun them for just a couple of seconds uh what i like to use is smoke bombs myself because the smoke bombs will sit there and burn for a little while and continue to stun more freakers coming into the area uh the flashbangs are less expensive though uh like i say flashbangs we can just buy those at camp for 100 credits each where smoke bombs the best way to replace those is to go to the hidden loot locations and pick them up. Uh, and, of course, uh, most of you will know the hidden loot locations video. Uh, if not, uh, could someone put that in the chat for me, please? Just so it's there. For posterity or something. Pick up our ears. Okay, and let's let's pick another horde. What we'll do is we'll just go to another horde in this area. Ah, uh, here's the Wapanisha Road. Yeah, I like using this one. Let's see, where is... Yeah, right here. I like to take these guys down here because of this ambush camp here. Ian L. Okie dokie. <laughs> welcome in, welcome in. Oh, Thomas Cole. Yeah, yeah. I, I did check out the video that you shared on our Discord. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, that is actually pretty cool. You can clearly see that the skill... Let me, I'll show you all what we're talking about here. Let me get stopped real quick. Uh, we're talking about Vicious Cycle. Let me find it. I actually I don't even remember where it's at. 
Good Lord, where is it? Oh, it's a ranged skill, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, shit, I didn't even, didn't even recall. So one of the ranged skills called Vicious Cycle, what it does is if you make a ranged attack and then follow up with a melee attack, no, it's the other way around. You start with a melee attack and then go to a ranged. You smash them with your melee weapon and then pull out a ranged weapon. Uh, it does significantly more damage. It'll take off even like a large chunk of the health bar for like a Rager Bear, uh, which is what Thomas showed in the video that he shared on our Discord. Okay. Breaker. There he is. So, like I was saying, the, uh... The BFG is the best sniper rifle in the game. We're playing on hard two difficulty right now. Uh, and as you can see, it only took two headshots to take out probably the bullet spongiest enemy in the game. Uh, I think a Reacher. Uh, actually, this little bastard right here. This guy. Uh... I don't think we scored a headshot there, but still only took two shots to kill him. Uh, yeah, it took his arm off <laughs> with the first shot. But uh, let's see. Why are we not reloading the weapon? Please reload your magazine, sir. Basic training. Keep your fucking magazine full, soldier. Anyway, um, we are... You know, that shows you the BFG sniper rifle. You can take anything with that. Just a few shots with that oh god damn another reacher uh yeah you can take nearly anything even a rager bear takes what like four shots on hard two difficulty i think that's runners no it looked like we had the camera angle shift no it's marauders actually interesting so we'll get away from the bike because they're going to come toward the bike Dolina! Hello and welcome, Dolina. Hello to Iraq. Thank you for joining us. So I'm going to change my angle just a little bit here, and we're going to equip a sniper, uh, a suppressor on here. And give me a nice clean shot. There you go. Walk right into it, buddy. Another one right there. That's why we run with the BFG. Uh, I recommend whatever the best sniper rifle you can unlock at the time is the one you should be running with. Because there's, you know, there are other sniper rifles that you can get in the game uh, from various places. But once you get the BFG, it supersedes all other weapons that might go in your special slot. Dandy Denny, hello and welcome. And oh shit, Barafi, what's up, man? I'm here now with more beer, as you need to be a little crazy to face hordes, <laughs> right? I should have a beer. I, th I think we have one beer left. Okay, so these guys are already approaching us. So I'm not going to bother with a suppressor. Get the bastard. Yeah, just let them walk into it. Uh, but you can see how accurate the uh, Chicago chopper is. And this chopper, this is basic. This is your spray and pray weapon. This is your spray and pray option. Uh, but it is still capable of making extremely accurate shots at, you know, short to medium range uh, for sure. Negative. I will have a splash of whiskey, please. Thank you. Just like half of a, yeah, in our Crater Lake shot glass. Yeah. Yeah, just maybe half of one will be great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, just half the bottle. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to come up here and we're going to use this horde to clear this ambush camp. Oh, oh check it out. These guys had a fucking tripwire across the road. Can you melee these? You cannot. Uh, but you can shoot them, though. And I don't know why that is so satisfying. But I really enjoy shooting their wires for some reason. Mega Man, the Blue Lion. What's up, man? How are you? Come on in, bud. Come on in. Right. So, I'll show you something else you can do with hordes.
Now, something I like to do, I do like to make a little noise to bring them out. Uh-huh. One second. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, dude, did you just ask me to show you show you my hole? <laughs> what? Oh, the 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 uh, the uh, lava tube opening to the cave here. Yeah, yeah, I got you, man. No worries. Uh, <laughs> uh, OK, we can actually do that right now uh, before we get started and make too much noise here. OK, so right up here, this is one of two hordes that I know of that has an opening at the top of the horde cave. Uh, you can actually take the horde out from right here. And this is one of the things I want to point this out. This is one of the things that really fascinated me about the hordes in Days Gone initially, where you can go out and just hunt the hordes in the wild. You can clearly see these, these claw marks and the footprints, the muddy, bloody footprints and big old mess here. You know this is a spot where a horde spawns. You know there is a horde around here somewhere. And if you look at the map, even, you can see... Here, here we go. Let me get to the map. Well, shit, it's got the red markers are actually in the way right now. But you can clearly see you're looking at a hole in the ground right here. And if you look around, I'm sure we could find where they feed uh, and where they go for water and stuff. Because you'll see... Uh, I actually don't know. Where are their other locations? Over here? Really? Yeah, so there's like a muddy, bloody spot over here. I think this is like a little mass grave where they feed at. And then, yeah, the the uh, southern, southwestern part of this little pond here uh, is where they go for water. And, and you can kind of see it on the road there. I don't know how clear it is on your screen, but you can see the footprints on the side of the road there. So the game actually shows you exactly where this stuff is. You can find where they take shelter, where they feed, where they where they go for water, and you can track them in the wild like that. And even though this isn't the primary entrance for this cave, you can still see clearly you're looking at a horde spawn location. That was a screamer. Did she bring in a swarm? She did. So we may actually go quiet here because I do not want to uh, activate this horde. Okay, that was not a kill shot on her. That was not a kill shot. So that was, th what, two, three headshots on the Screamer with the are. SMP9, but we were just too far away. Just the distance was too great. There we go. And last. Okay, so we managed to take out the Screamer and her little swarm quietly enough. I don't think we alerted the ambush camp or the horde here. All right, so now we're going to go down and we're going to wake up this horde. We're basically going to kick the hornet's nest and lead them up into this ambush camp. And so what I was going to show, what were we doing? Okay, we're going to use a flashbang, again, just to make a little noise and get their attention and pull them out of the cave. This is all we're trying to do, and I'm just going to throw it up here so it will bounce. There we go. All right, so we made some noise. That should get the horde moving this way. Is that going to pull them out all the way, though? We may have to use an attractor or another flashbang. Let's go for an attractor. I know this works. Here we go. Now, make a little noise so then... Well, <laughs> I still had the suppressor on. Come on, guys. Let's go. Embarrassing me in front of my friends. Come on. So, we're going to lead the horde up here. Go a little bit serpentine. I want to make sure we got everybody. Yeah, we got a lot of them. Nice. Okay, we're going to lead them up into this camp. Now, the main thing is you will need to actually enter the camp. So, you want to drive fairly carefully going in not fuck it up too bad and then make a good exit like a swift exit now the gunfire from the camp will attract the horde and all you need to do is just get away from them I'll come back and deal with the, the horde will later. continue to aggro on you if uh if you're not careful what do you think now huh somebody shoots back how do you so now let's swap it over to the ambush camp as our objective which like it won't allow me to do for some reason that's odd 
Anyway, you just kind of stay hidden for a minute. There's another one. I got you now. Yeah, I'm trying to. It will not let me select this ambush camp as my current mission. Asshole. I wonder, can we do it through the storylines menu? Should be ambush camp hunter, right? Here it is. Uh, nope, it's only showing me the ones we've completed. It's not showing me the one I just activated by rolling up in their camp with a horde. All right, so I want to get in position. I know the horde's cave is just down here, uh, just north of us a ways. Is that? Yeah, just north of us. Uh, and then, uh, so I want to kind of be in the path of the horde when they head back to their cave. Because they're going to roll through here and pretty much clear this entire camp. I don't think they'll need much encouragement. Oh, they've gotten someone's attention. Oh, we've gotten the horde's attention. God damn it. Lead them into the camp. Did he just... He just said last one, didn't he? Hey, buddy. Brought you a present. Camp's clear. There we go. Camp's clear. <laughs> All right. So now I want to try and get myself... I want to break line of sight and get myself back into stealth. Can we pull it off? I think we pulled it off. You're not actually aggroed on me, are you? They are not. All right. So now... Let's get their attention. And we're going to go ahead and clear the horde. And then we'll clean up with the chopper. Last two, maybe? Last two right there. Yeah, yeah. So what we just did, we just took out an entire ambush camp with, I don't think we used any ammunition on the ambush camp. Uh, and then we took out a horde at the same time with minimal resources as well. Uh, let's see. I need to say hello to Nitro Borders 17 and Joe Schmo 0216. And I'll check this out also, Mr. Dutchy Dutch. Hi, everybody. Welcome in. How are y'all doing this evening? Cheers. It's just way too efficient, right? I mean, and if you do it right, where you're not using a lot of resources on the horde either, it, it's really just the natural way to do it. And another thing that has happened for us here, um, specifically, you now have all of these ambushers, all of the marauders here that got killed by the horde. You can go and loot these bodies now, and you have, you know, whatever resources you pick up off of them. What did we use? We, um, we used one attractor and a couple of grenades. And you may even get some grenades back off of these people. Claire's waving like I need to say hi to somebody. Oh, yeah. No, she's been... Uh, yeah, we said hi to her. Thank you. Hi, Melissa. <laughs> oh, weird backhanded interview with your old company. Uh, the most recent former company or, or the former, former company? So I know you were supposed to be interviewing with uh, some folks you've worked with previously. Weird backhanded interview. That sounds interesting. Yes, we really don't even need much off of these guys because we didn't use many resources taking out the horde. I think I did use one napalm molotov, so we'll pick up this uh, kerosene here. Uh, but also what it does is, you know, we just cleared an ambush camp. So even though, you know, you finish up a horde fight, maybe you have used a lot of resources. Maybe you used a lot of ammo. Well, you've just also opened up an ambush camp and you can come down here and hit the weapon locker or go grab a fuel can or something if you need fuel for the bike. You just opened up a spot to resupply, rest and reload. There it is. A map. Looks like they marked it up good. Ah, the former, former company. Yeah, Muhammad, sometimes they will drop the stuff that you need. And like, also, uh, this is a new game plus, so I've already got all the recipes unlocked. But at this ambush camp, you unlock a crafting recipe. 
And so you've also, like if it's a fresh playthrough, you've just unlocked a crafting recipe, you can go up and loot those corpses and loot the ambush camp and perhaps find stuff you need for that new recipe you just unlocked. Uh, so we have used a few rounds from the chopper. Notice it just cost us 224 credits to refill the chopper. Uh, it cost us 21 to refill our sidearm and then the special uh, 550, which I'm not at all bothered about that. This is a late game, new game plus playthrough. We have plenty of credits and, and I likely won't even save this progress. I'll just, you know, keep the save file I already have. Uh, so it's kind of fluid funds anyway. Uh, but you can see it was really expensive to grab all that ammo from this locker. What you can also do is use the bike itself. Just use the saddlebags on the bike, which is what I recommend doing because it only costs like 400 credits to refill your saddlebag where we paid damn near a thousand credits to reload everything just then. And I... I'll be honest, I actually don't know where the fuel can is in that ambush camp. I'm sure there is a fuel can somewhere within the ambush camp. But I always use this fuel can right here on this tow truck right here. I know it's right here at the intersection of these two roads right here on the corner. And there's a fuel can right there on the truck. So I usually just hit it as soon as I come out of the ambush camp. Make sure I've uh, topped off my fuel. Hi. Hey, fuck off, dude. They did good cop, bad cop. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wait. Hang on. They said they were advised not to rehire you because you need support. So that means they called your most recent former employer for like a reference or whatever. And like they said you were not eligible for rehire at that company because you need support. So this current interview was like, no, we're not going to. Well, I don't know that they said, no, we're not going to, but they used that against you. Fucking guys. Hmm. I was hoping we might get some action here, like a, uh, a little survivor rescue or something. A marauder ambush, some freaks to kill, nothing. All right, let's have a look. It is currently 518 PM. We probably should have camped at, uh, at that ambush camp we just unlocked. Uh, here's another horde. We're just a little ways away from them. Uh, if we catch them in the day, they'll be in this little cave over here. I bet we can get there pretty quickly. Yeah, it's just right around the corner here. I doubt they've come out for the evening. Aaron, welcome in, Aaron. How's it going? I'm not sure if this horde is home or not. I'm not hearing them yet. I think I just got audio for them. Oh, yeah, they're in there. All right. Okay, so... We're going to ambush them where they sleep. We got some bushes right outside the doorway here. You want to get them moving? Start with the flashbang. This will wake them up. Start to pull them out. Then we can switch to an attractor. Dog bone! Right on time. Okay, so we throw this attractor out. Now they should actually gather around that. And we'll just follow up with a grenade or two. Now, because my dumbass popped up out of the grass and got spotted, I'm going to put a smoke bomb there and stun them. You can literally see it stunning them. Now, I'm only using my x ray vision so I can see them through the smoke. I don't really use it all that often, uh, but it is handy to be able to see them through the smoke. And you can see these guys, this next rank coming out. They were also stunned in the smoke. Look at that. You can see them still standing there huddled up in the smoke because that smoke bomb is still going. It is still stunning people for us as they come out of the cave. All right, time to go. There we are. Last one. 
minimal resources. Uh, flashbang, grenades, we can buy those, and a tractor, uh, a smoke bomb. Minimal resources. It really didn't take all that much. And again, you know, we can use the saddle bags on the bike to refill the chopper if we need to. So you can do that shit all day long. And that's what I'm talking about when I say sustainable resources. Things that are easy to make or easy to purchase. Anything that's easy to replace. Um, which, if you're buying your flashbangs and grenades from camp, if you're uh, getting your ammo from your saddlebags and just refilling your saddlebags at the camp, those are extremely easy to replace. And then... Uh, Oh man, I missed. That was dumb. There we go. <laughs> I do love Bull Rush. Uh, what I was trying to do though, I was trying to switch to this guy. Oh, uh, boot knife. If you do that, if you do the Bull Rush kill with the boot knife, that is absolutely resource free kills. It costs you nothing to make those kills. All right, let's head back to Lost Lake Camp. Go camp for the night. Go out and kill some more hordes. Hello, green truck. How are you? Is that green or is that yellow? Yeah, this will work. It is crazy hot in here. Can we turn the air conditioner on or something? Hey, babe. Can we turn the air conditioner on? I know the rest of the house is going to be cold, but it's like crazy hot in here. I can't even concentrate. I tried to open the window earlier for a breeze, uh, but there's a game going on at the stadium that's basically in our backyard. Ah, uh, thank you. So the noise from the stadium was just intolerable. The mic kept picking it up every time I keyed up the mic. All right. There's a bed there, sir. Use it. Okay. And have I missed saying hello to anyone? Ah, I see. Uh, I'm. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing this. I F U N. I'm gonna call it iPhone. Uh, hi, iPhone. How's it going? I assume you're a lot of fun. Oh, you're gonna get get some uh, more information uh, tomorrow. Nice. Well, good luck. Wild pizza bagels can, in fact, be breakfast. Okay, it is now 7.06 a.m. We are topped off and ready to rock and roll. What else are we going to do? I guess we should actually go back to camp and uh, resupply. Uh, Dogbone, yes, we are still in Colorado. Absolutely love it here, man. This place is beautiful. It's just beautiful. The weather is crazy too, man. Like crazy good. You know, I'm I'm from East Texas, which is always hot and humid. It's just always hot and humid there. Uh this morning I was at work and it was like 50 degrees outside and extremely low humidity, uh, with a, a bit of a nice breeze. So like I I was busting ass at work yesterday and today. Uh, one second, let me deal with these fucking runners. Uh, so yeah, it's, we were doing uh, really physical work yesterday and today. So it was nice. I had to step outside for a minute. We're taking some trash out to the dumpsters. And... Uh, I step outside and there's just, it's this lovely 
gorgeous Colorado morning, crisp, cool, bit of a breeze. It's li literally a breath of fresh air uh, as soon as I step outside. Where at this time of year, back in uh, my hometown in East Texas, it was probably hot and humid already, you know. It's already damn near, you might as well call it summertime there. Because it's fucking hot, I promise you. Okay, well, let's go ahead and top off from here, because we can. Uh, we actually did need a few rounds. And then another thing about coming back to the camps, you can see so you can refill all that ammo for just 400 credits, uh, but you can also top okay. off your suppressors. Very inexpensive. Uh, had I, do I need to use a med kit? I don't need to use a med kit, do I? Tell me if I need a med kit. I do not need a med kit. Okay. A lot of times I'll go ahead and buy one from camp just to top off my health. Uh, but we do need a couple of flashbangs. You can buy up to three at a time. These are pretty much infinite. You just leave camp and come right back and they have more. Same with the uh, med kits and uh, the grenade. Uh, med kits and suppressors. Yeah, good. There we go. All right. And that nearly filled us up, right? I think we can carry, what, one more grenade? Oh, shit. We had, what? We used all our grenades. Okay. Deke. That's Deke fine. I know where to get more. Mr. Johnson, welcome in. Mr. Johnson, 487. How's it going? Oh, you got, you had to get some new windows installed. Dang. Uh, the weather finally gave you a break or broke your windows because of all the storms in Ohio. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, yeah, that's that's kind of why we do it, man. Deke. Like, no bullshit. How's that's that's kind of why we do it. That's what makes it so much fun for me. All right. So, I mean, geez, that's almost all the... Is it, what, half of the hordes in this area? Yeah, half of them. We might as well go take some of these others. I like Sherman's Camp. I've been having a lot of fun clearing the Sherman's Camp horde here lately. I see you over there. <laughs> no, kitty, it's my pot pie. Oh, shit, sniper, sniper, sniper. Get off the bike, get off the bike. Interrupt line of sight. Ah, there we go. The tree took the shot. Nice. Are we in stealth right now? Is he... He does not have line of sight on us. Excellent. Okay, so now we have a suppressor attached. I'm going to go ahead and snipe this fucking sniper. Hey, buddy. And that right there is one of the reasons I say the BFG is the weapon you carry on your back. Uh, most of the time. That right there. Now, if we want to, we can push up and go find his friends. If he even has any. Sometimes they do spawn without backup. Do I need to say hi to somebody? Claire waved at me like I need to say hi. Oh, shit. Uh, James Guan. James, what's up, man? Shit, yeah. All right. Glad you could, glad you could join us, man. Yeah. How you been? <laughs> you feel pretty new, huh? Yeah, I was like, who is this motherfucker? Yes, same here, Nitro Border. I mean, I got to be honest, man. Uh, Nitro Border 17 there, that's that's kind of exactly how I feel. I had, I had no idea what we were getting started. I had no idea, man. I just, my very first live stream, I, it's, it's pretty low quality and, and pretty badly dated now. My very first live stream was the best early game start. The whole reason I did that was basically just to talk people through getting the SMP9 really early. That was like my earliest iteration of the, hey, holy shit, you can unlock the SMP9 in just a couple of hours of gameplay if you go to the right places first and do the right things first. Uh, and I, I didn't think that anyone would want to watch like an hour long video, but I figured if I did it as an interactive experience, you know, people might sit through a two hour live stream uh, rather than, you know, just an hour long video later, which little did I know that that works too. Uh, but like, yeah, that's, 
I had no idea what I was starting when I did that first live stream, just trying to show folks how to get the S&P 9 early. That's really all we were doing with that. And it turned into all of this. Hmm. Need to say hello to Ivan. Ivan S. Welcome. Welcome in. Good morning from Serbia. Hello to Serbia. Hmm. Yeah, Nitro Border, you had already purchased the crappy version of the SMP9 and then went and got the better one after seeing that video, yeah. Oh, damn, Dogbone, you had decided to quit Days Gone uh, and then stumbled on that live stream tutorial. Now you're on playthrough number 10 and don't even fear the hordes. And that's exactly what we're talking about with these these tactics that we're trying to show here. What I What I have always liked doing best is... Teaching people that mindset of don't take any shit off of those freaks. Get out there and kick some ass. You don't have to be afraid of them. I mean, sure, the fear is fun, too. Uh, like taking on the hordes at night or just driving the bike through the, through the tunnels that are blocked off and stuff. The fear is part of the fun. But for me personally, I like to eliminate that fear in games and and i like to share the mindset that allows you to just kind of dominate that shit and make it look easy all right so i wanted to go up here to the sherman's camp horde for a couple of reasons uh they have smoke bombs up there for one thing there's uh, a place you can pick up two smoke bombs here in this town beside us oh two question marks and a sniper all right break line of sight there you go got to interrupt that line of sight we're close enough we could probably use something like this i don't know if i can get a headshot yeah we can get a headshot even there all right and let's get a different angle here Boop. Boop. oh i missed that one there we go anyway what is this oh shit barappy coming in with some of that uh canadian funny money and passing around some complimentary memberships to the Sponicus Rex channel. Thank you. Thanks, man. Check it out. Uh, five lucky folks just got gifted memberships to the Sponicus Rex channel. Which, that's really good timing for that. Let's, what is, I don't, well, I don't know if we'll be doing our next uh, co-op live streaming session uh, within a month. But those memberships, you folks decide to continue the memberships that you were just gifted uh, I'll make you eligible for our members only co-op gaming sessions. You want to come hang out with us and play some video games with us on a Saturday night? Well, there you go. That's how it's done. <laughs> he looks like he's laying that way on purpose. Like, hey man, what you got behind your back? All right. So now that we're done clearing that out of the way, We'll go down here and uh, engage this horde. And who was it that got gifted? Let's see who got memberships tonight. Old Lady D Geek, Hasib, Darian Star, and D Marlow 310. Congratulations, folks. Cool. Now, I'll tell you, uh, D Marlow 310 is one of the guys that initially inspired me to start making Days Gone videos. Uh, he had put up a video uh, some years ago um using i think it was like a hundred remote bombs to clear the sawmill horde uh he had found a way to glitch in a whole bunch of remote bombs uh, and a bunch of uh explosives and stuff uh, which of course that glitch has been patched since then uh but at the time he was able to put in like a hundred mo remote bombs and destroy the sawmill horde in one go and i was like so impressed by that i was like oh oh well, there are lots of creative ways to take out the hordes, aren't there? I wonder if I could take out a horde without firing any shots. Maybe the Iron Butte horde? And that's when I came up with the uh, the method for clearing the Iron Butte horde with no shots fired, which I think we'll show that tonight. Uh, hopefully I won't fuck it up. I haven't done that in a long time, uh, so I don't have the muscle memory for it. But that's something I've, I've done that dozens of times, just practicing it, just doing, you know, perfecting the technique initially. And then uh, doing it for fun and practicing it. But it's been a long time since I've gone through 
and uh, done the Iron Butte Horde, no shots fired. Okay, we'll make sure we have the boot knife selected. We can use uh, Bull Rush on this guy. Shoulder slam him, and then press X, and you just stomp his head in. Check it out, we'll just stomp their head, and it takes zero resources. We didn't use any durability off of our axe. Uh, we didn't use anything. And it's quiet, too. It counts as a quiet melee kill. All right, so we have the Sherman's Camp Horde right over here. You have a few materials up here. I think there's a Molotov and a Med Kit up here if you need it. Uh, fully crafted, ready to go. And here's our horde down here. These guys right here inside this building. Oh, they've... All, how, did they already spot me? Or is... They may have seen me peeking up over the sign. But I also hear gunfire in the background. So it's likely that got their attention and made them look. All right. So... Keep your distance to avoid being spotted. <laughs> yeah, the wolves, they smelled blood, man. <laughs> oh, and there's a screamer there. Just let them walk into it. Okay. See if our horde is still there. I can't tell if they're inside the building or not. I don't see anybody moving around in there. Oh, yeah, they're in there. So, something that I try to do whenever possible, I like to start from a position where I have a really, really good firing angle. For example, if you come right here and shoulder swap over the windshield of this vehicle, especially with a high rate of fire weapon like this or like the MG55, you can pretty much just maintain fire on this doorway here and take out almost every freaker right here in one minimal firing angle. And there are lots of other places where you can do this. Like this is a natural choke point here at the top of the stairs. But if you change the angle to about right here, you can pretty much get all of them as they come up the steps. Oh, here we go. And there's stuff like that that you can take advantage of all over the map. See, I'm basically just holding it in roughly the same spot. Oh, there were stragglers. That's what it was. Yeah, roughly the same spot and making them walk into where I'm already aiming, if that makes sense. Holy shit, Selby Miser! Richie, what's up, man? Five additional Spawnicus Rex memberships. Holy shit. Who are the lucky individuals now? Thomas Cole, Mr. Johnson, 487, Gamer Bree, and Doug A, and Zatanna, XYT. Thank you, Richie. I appreciate it, man. And look at those lucky folk. Lucky, lucky folks. Uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, yeah, that's cool. Mr. Johnson's been around quite a bit, been uh, doing me the favor of leaving comments on the live streams and videos after they're no longer live. Uh, which is, the, you know, the kind of the little things that add support uh, in drawing attention to the algorithm, you know, just interacting with the videos so that YouTube is more likely to push it out to other viewers. That's exactly the kind of stuff I'm talking about. So thank you, Mr. Johnson. That's that's one of those little ways where the community gives back for, for that support. Thanks, guys. That's fucking awesome. And check it out. You get you get access to those unique little emojis there, custom emojis, made by 8-Bit Terror, host of the Days Gone podcast. You gotta fucking love it, man. You gotta love it. YouTube can be fickle, yeah. Yep. 
Like I experienced it firsthand when I was going through cancer. I wasn't putting out any videos. I wasn't live streaming. I wasn't producing any videos, nothing. In fact, I fell out of the habit so hard that it's been it's been a struggle to get back into the habit of making videos regularly. So like it was a big deal. We weren't doing really anything with the channel for a while. Um and the channel suffer, suffered for it. The views went down. The algorithm the algorithm was not pushing out our videos when we did do streams. When we came back, the views were lower. And not that folks weren't around to show their support, but it's like YouTube was not showing the videos to people as recommended videos. And it's taken us a while to recover from that. So like, absolutely. Little things like views, likes, comments, just clicks, likes, comments. All that shit. Where the fuck is this coming from? What is this? Is there perhaps a screamer nearby who's spawning in little mini swarms? Because we have cleared the horde here. There's got to be a screamer nearby. Dude. Okay. That was a bit sloppy, actually. Where are they coming from? It's literally like there's another horde here, but I know that there is not. There are no other hordes at this location. It's not nighttime. And also, you'll never see female freakers as a member of a horde. So if you have female freakers, they're coming in from somewhere else. They're not a horde. Not part of a horde. This is interesting. I'm actually not sure what's going on. It's like after dark, you would expect to see quite a few freaks, just random freaks roaming around. Maybe they're getting it confused with challenge mode. <laughs> We're not in challenge mode. Calm down. Borislav, save me. <laughs> there we go. Seriously, was there a screamer or something? Because, like, you know, sometimes screamers will spawn, like, two or three of them at a time, sometimes four or five of them at a time. So if you have four or five screamers going off, pulling in mini swarms, you can end up with a large mini swarm. Yeah, I don't know what that was. That was just fucking chaos is what that was. I hate Sherman's Camp. Sherman's Camp is crawling. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Fuck this place. It's a stupid place. Let's not go. <laughs> Have I missed saying hi to anybody? If I've missed anyone, please do pop up in the chat and we will make an effort to say hello. If I have missed saying hello, I apologize. Thank you for being here, whoever you are. Masked strangers. All right. What else do we want to do? Oh, yeah. River Flow Farms. Fuck yeah. I, I, we showed this one in the last episode um, <clears throat> because I like catching them up here and using smoke bombs at the mouth of their cave. And that's what we were showing last time. So let's do something a little bit different with them this time. Try not to do it exactly the same way both times. Yeah, we didn't pick up the smoke bombs in Sherman's camp. I was thinking of that as I was leaving, as I was like, fuck it, let's get out of here. This is a stupid place. I don't want to be here. But yeah, we did have smoke bombs we were going to get. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just load the save game that I've got. Uh, we'll load back in where we're fully equipped with everything. Because uh, I've got a, a late game, new game plus save with all of the hordes uh, respawned. All right. Okay, we still have plenty of ammo. And, and as you can see, we have just been wasting ammo with the chopper and I've still got a full magazine and nearly uh, over half of a magazine in reserve. So I've got two full magazines, still got a buttload of ammo with the SMP nine and we've still got 25 kill shots with the BFG. Let's do that actually <clears throat> just for fun. Check this out. We'll do an attractor. Get them at the mouth of the cave here, and let's talk about penetration. 
You can never have too much penetration. Actually, let's do put a suppressor on. That may buy us a few quiet shots. We'll let them get gathered up around that uh, attractor there. And let's just start firing into the crowd. You can see how many we're taking out with this fucking thing. It's crazy. Like, how did we do, actually? Let's... We got nearly half of them just with the one magazine from the BFG. And now let's take a look and see what type of terrain options we have around us. We can see how many are left. Uh, I don't think we managed to pull all of them out because I doubt this is the full horde. I can't get the camera adjusted to see over that little hill there. So... <clears throat> We don't have very many on us, or we don't have very many out right now. So the pressure's kind of off, you know. Um, we could do just about anything we want to do with them. We can run them across this. Actually, I've got an idea. I know what we're doing. Uh, you can see this little stream here. Running them across water will slow them down. Now, it's going to slow us down a little bit as well, but not that bad. We can kind of slide here. Get moving nice and quick and now as they try to cross actually they're falling down coming off of that ledge over there i should have taken advantage of that here they are coming across the water and you can see the water slows them down they kind of stumble coming through the water let's watch this guy just watch this one closely see how he kind of slows down and staggered in the water a bit and you can take advantage of that um uh, against massive hordes and it didn't even take much water this is a very small stretch of water here but it was enough to buy me a little more time to renew my assault ah i have missed saying hello to macaulay hello macaulay welcome 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 thank you for joining us this evening now, where is the rest of this damn horde? Okay, we've gone too far north. Or that way. Hmm, um, let's see. Thomas Cole, that patch is also helpful. The patch that uh, grants increased penetration? Yes, very. Ah, oh, I need to, need to say hello to Richard Taylor. Good morning actually made it to a live stream even though it's 3 a.m there yeah well thank you i appreciate it man so are you up late or up early which one is it and north songs has joined us hello north songs welcome in hell yeah so I want to use an, uh flashbang here. This will make a little noise. Draw them in where we want them. May put an attractor down there just for fun once it kind of pulls them out a bit. Then we can really get them grouped up where we want them. That works. And let's put some heavy damage on them. Right there. Boom. That should take out most of them. There we go. <laughs> I love the way they're dropping back there from the fire. Yeah. And that's all about overwhelming force, man. Overwhelming force. Okay, we only have one more horde other than uh, the sawmill horde, which we did those in the last episode. Uh, let's go ahead. I won't even need to resupply. I've got everything I need. Uh, we could hit the saddlebags, I guess. We, we should hit the saddlebags, I think. And then oh, I could remake an attractor, so we don't need many of them. So that's just kind of an idea of like, the tactics that you use to achieve overwhelming force, uh, making them follow you across difficult terrain, like water and stuff like this, you know, making them cross difficult terrain to slow them down, taking advantage of elevation where you're above them and they kind of can't see you very well. 
And even if they see you, you've already unleashed insane amounts of damage on them before they can get to you, like that rock. <laughs> Tactical stop. Tree. All right, anyway, let's go get the uh, Metolius Lava Cave Horde. And then we'll likely just uh, reset from my late game save. And then we'll go a little further south and take a look at some of the bigger hordes in the game and see if these techniques that I've been showing you, we'll see if they work as well on the big hordes too. I keep forgetting my suppressor on the pistol. I like squeezing them between the vehicles when you can. <laughs> anyway. You're crossing the road two years ago. You would have gone splat. Okay. Oh shit, I went the wrong way, didn't I? I started worrying about those runners and went the wrong way for the horde. We need to head back up this direction. There we go. Now we're back on track. But yeah, I hate uh, having runners on you when you still have a suppressor on your sidearm. That's one reason I ran with the little stubby shotgun as a sidearm for a long time. Because you can't put a suppressor on that at all. It's like, ha ha, I'm not wasting a suppressor now, motherfucker. I hate runners. Runners are my least favorite enemy in the game, period. Hands down, I hate them. Always hated the runners. When I find... I, it's my fault for assuming, but I had always assumed when you max out the bike, you get the maximum engine upgrade, you get the maximum nitro upgrade. I had always assumed that you would then be able to outrun the runners it's my fault for assuming but i was actually a little upset when i first found out that it doesn't work that way it's it's not a okay now you're fast enough to outrun anything uh, no that's not ever a thing in days gone uh now as uh eight bit terror host of the days gone podcast has pointed out many times you can still evade them by driving like a fucking madman <laughs> which comes with its own inherent dangers uh i usually <laughs> Tactical stops were great, huh? <laughs> yeah, you kill, yourself before the runners kill yourself before the runners get to you. Yeah, yeah, it's like drinking bleach to stay young. Yeah, it's just not a great idea. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, I usually just get off the bike and throw a smoke bomb at the little fuckers and make them throw up right where they're at. It's what I like to do. Yeah, you can't outrun the runners. The only way you can outrun the runners is if you zigzag a lot and like lead them through difficult terrain, basically like we're doing with the hordes, make them cut through trees. And you could see earlier how I ran that one uh, over because I got him pinned between the bike and that truck there. So you can do stuff like that. Uh, but I was disappointed to find out that you cannot just max throttle and outrun the runners. I, I was a little disappointed to find that out. Uh, so it makes me really, really, really hate runners. Uh, let's see. Ah, we need to say hello to Deke St. J. Well, that's why they're called runners. You have a point. <laughs> uh, and Macaulay asking, do I have a favorite special weapon? Yes, actually. And that's part of what we started off talking about here at the beginning of this stream. The reason I'm carrying the Chicago Chopper, the SMP9 Horde Killer version specifically, and the BFG. The reason I'm carrying these three weapons is is because I would say this is the best loadout in Days Gone. This is certainly the most well-rounded loadout. You have your medium to long range spray and pray that is also quite accurate, even at distance. You have your, let me take the suppressor off. You have your short to medium range spray and pray that is also quite accurate at range. And then you have your uh, you have your extreme range weapon, which is for precise shots at like crazy distances. Actually, that was a little too on the nose. I bet if we go down where it's if it's in focus, you can make the shot. Yeah, see, highly precise extreme range weapon. So I would say the BFG is my personal favorite for the special weapon slot. If you are killing hordes, well then you'll want something like the MG45 the uh, RPD or the MG55. But what I'm showing this evening with these three weapons, the Chicago Chopper, BFG, and SMP9, 
you can take on literally anything that the game can throw at you up to and including the largest hordes in the game. I would feel perfectly comfortable taking on the sawmill horde with just this, this loadout right here. Uh, I, you don't have to have anything bigger. You don't need to have a machine gun in your special weapon slot. Um, the, the chopper. <laughs> a machine gun in your what? Uh, the chopper is actually good enough, especially if you're using these tactics that we're showing. Uh, if you're using things like elevation and renewable resources, uh, things like that. Okay, so. Uh, we didn't even engage the horde yet, did we? I got to talking and forgot about the horde. That's probably a bad idea. All right, so. This horde, there's a lot of different options for how you can do these guys uh, if you have them at the cave here. Uh, again, I like to just kind of ambush them where they sleep. That's kind of my thing. I get a kick out of it. Um, it's hard to see in here. But you can see the horde is all nested off back there in the corner there. And you can start, again, like I was showing earlier. You can use a flashbang. Just kind of put it in here to draw their attention. That's going to bring them out a little ways. Turn the tractor here in the opening. And then we'll use some smoke bombs or something. Once they start to actually come up, we'll stun them. Get a few of them in position there. No, we want this one. And I'm only using the x-ray vision so you guys can see what's happening. You can see how they come into the smoke and just stop dead in their tracks. And if I put another one out, well, it's gonna fuck it up. I want one more right here. We'll do the same thing once we reload. <laughs> I said reload! Anyway, that still slowed them down. You can see there's still some frozen back there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of terrain instead. We've lost control of the opening of the cave. All right, it sucks, but it happens. So now we're gonna use other things like right here. If I run them around the corner of this rock, they're just gonna flow around it. Let me bring it up a little bit. You can see there are still enough on the field trying to use small cover like this, like this pile of rocks here. It's not gonna do you much good. You may be able to get off a few shots, especially if you use a flashbang uh, or, oh, sorry bumping buttons on the mic processor. Uh, you may be able to use like a flashbang or a smoke bomb to improve your effectiveness at this location. This is not a good spot. Uh, they're just gonna flow around this side of the rocks and they'll come around this side of the rocks and they'll just end up flanking you uh, because they love to fan out and pincer attack you. They, it's one of those things, that's one of the things I've always loved about the way the hordes move. So what we're gonna use instead, we're gonna bring them this way and force them to come around this. It's a bigger break where they have to approach. They cannot approach you from two directions. It's still a wide fan of them, but they can't approach you from both directions. Yeah, we've done some serious damage to them there. All right, so what I also want to do, like we were saying earlier, you can make them come across water. <laughs> See if we can get them stuck in this water down here. Check it out. No, nah, they're going to flank us from the other direction. All right. Okay. That's a bust. <laughs> Now, what I'm doing right now, I'm doing this on purpose. I want to kite them around a little bit. We're just going serpentine because I want to get them bunched up again. There we go. I'm just leading them around the corner. That's all I'm doing. Leading them around the corner. Making them walk into my line of fire as I turn around. Watch here. We'll do it again right here. Making them walk into my line of fire. It was all spread out. It was all crazy. It was all chaotic. But we didn't really get hurt that bad. We didn't really use that many resources. Uh, I used a few resources at the beginning. We, what, an attractor? Smoke bomb here and there. But if you're buying your stuff from camp and you're using the hidden loot locations to replace the other shit, the stuff you can't buy, what did we really lose? Nothing. 
except our stamina. <laughs> Oh, two dog. Oh, wow. Y'all just sniped him off. He was glitched out and you just sniped him off the top of it. That's cool. I usually uh like to plant proximity mines and uh, take him out as soon as he spawns. All right. So let's reload that previous save. We'll just be like we didn't waste any of those resources or do anything. Uh, and then we'll go further south and see some of the bigger hordes. <laughs> Zombie genocide. <laughs> Guys burned out a nest a few weeks back. You know, uh, freaker nest. Yeah, Muhammad, that's a great point. Another way to do that, Horde, you don't even have to pull them out of the cave like that. You can go in quietly and set a bunch of mines and stuff down there. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I do want to trade out weapons because I was intending to run with the chopper, the BFG, and the SMP9. Now, my personal favorite loadout for the game is the auto shotgun the BFG, and the SMP9. But if I were to recommend the most well-rounded loadout, I would say go with the All chopper, right. the BFG, and the SMP9. Hey, Deke, be safe. Lure two hordes into one? Yeah, yeah, that is fun as well. Hey, Deke, let me get the game. All right, so, yeah, they're north of camp. Marauders, which is going to aggro the horde. Okay. Ow, that actually hurt, fucker. Uh, <laughs> cool, we did get a headshot on both. Oh, I thought we got a headshot on both of them. I guess not. Well, that aggroed the horde, which kind of pisses me off, but maybe we can gain control of it again. All right, so the Horde will take out those Marauders up there, and they should go back to their cave nice and quiet. Oh, Richard Taylor, yeah. Is that the uh, the tank with the baby in it? <laughs> uh, the um, Death Stranding crossover tank? They cannot have aggroed on me. Huh. Ah. That should not even be possible. All right, so we're actually not taking that. That's kind of bullshit. We'll load back from camp. Yeah, that was weird, wasn't it? Couple months ago, we were up by crazy. Like, it should not have been possible. They should not have aggroed on me at all. All right, let's try it again. We'll go in and uh, plant some bombs for them, like we were talking about earlier. Just an alternate way to do this. Now, a lot of what I talk about and what I've been showing here lately is like doing it with fewer resources or at least resources that are easily replaced. You can use as many grenades as you want to because you can just go buy more at camp. You can use as many flashbangs as you want to. Just go buy some more. Hell, use as many bombs as you want to. Just go to the hidden loot locations and pick them up. Uh, but I like to, the uh, raider camp is going to be there again. I saw the question mark. We'll have to go in quiet this time and take out those marauders quietly. What are... They're still going to wake up the horde. God damn it. <laughs> no, we haven't been using rest mode. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, it runs great on the P- on the PlayStation Five. Gen- generally, I mean, yeah, it, it still gets a little weird sometimes. But you know, even rest mode isn't as big of a problem on the PlayStation Five. Uh, it is still a factor. Um, but I remember on the PS4 and the PS4 Pro specifically, uh, rest mode was a problem for those systems. No, uh, with Days Gone. Spidey, my favorite. MG55, Auto Shotgun, and SMP9, or Eliminator. Yeah, yeah, that's a killer loadout. Especially if you are out killing hordes. Because, uh, like, I guess if you were going to run the Auto Shotgun and the MG55, like, all the time, you'd probably want something like uh, the Eliminator or the PDW for a sidearm. Because you need some sort of highly accurate single shot option. I would want a highly accurate single shot option, like the PDW or something. Oh, Muhammad, that was a question. Were you asking if I had used uh, rest mode or were you asking why are people talking about rest mode? I'm sorry, I am a bit behind with the chat. Uh, See, this freaker here is not part of the horde. You will never find a female freaker in the horde. I will need to take her out quietly. See, the problem here is we're not going to be able to get in there to plant bombs until they have actually gone way back in the cave and fully settled down. Yeah, see, they're still walking around outside right now. Yeah, when you actually put the PlayStation in rest mode, uh, it stays powered up for quite a while. And the biggest problem, let me be more specific, will actually clarify what the problem is. Uh, If you leave Days Gone running and just go to rest mode, like right now, I have Days Gone up. I'm like, okay, I'm done gaming for the night. Let me go to rest mode from right here and the game is still running in the background, and then it sits in rest mode for a while, that will actually cause a problem. It can potentially cause a problem. Uh, I won't claim to fully understand it from a game mechanics perspective, um, but basically there's still shit going on in the background, and it just kind of piles up. It's like you didn't clear your cookies kind of shit. Oh, yeah, Richard, yeah, you just use uh, explosive bolts, um, stuff like that, if you have them on lockdown. Yeah. All right. They should have gotten all quiet back down there. Andrew Martinez. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. The In its own way, a frag grenade will act as an attractor and pull them into that position. They're drawn to the noise. All right, so now let's see if we can get in here and plant some bombs. They should all be settled in back down in the back corner of the cave. Yeah, so they actually, you can see, they actually don't have line of sight on you here. They can't see you around this corner, and they can't see you around this corner. But you know they'll come out from here, and they'll come out from here. So you can plant some mines in both locations. And you can kind of plant mines headed out as well, because they'll be coming out this direction. They'll be coming out this direction. Those two may go off simultaneously, but I doubt it. And then you can put another one here as they start to bottleneck to come up behind, uh, as they come up this route here. And we'll put another one right here at the top, because this is just a natural choke point. You have the wall here and the corner of the fence here, they'll have to go through this spot right here, right? And then so what we'll do, now you have to be careful because you can set off your own mines. Uh, Sometimes a flashbang will set off your mines. Sometimes a fucking attractor will set off your mines. It can be weird, uh, especially if you're on PC. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a little noise here. That will draw them out. 
And then we're going to get away from these fucking bombs. And I'm going to come up here in case they do actually make it up. Michelle, they may. I don't think we got very many with that. Let's have a look. Set this as our mission. Yeah, we've only eliminated a very small percentage. There's one more mine in place. Now that got a few of them. But you still have a nice choke point here where you're pretty much forcing them to walk into your line of fire. Again, forcing them into my line of fire. All right, now let's take them a different direction. We didn't go this way this time. See how they fan out here? Let me show you. Boom, right here. Check this out. They're all spread out. And this is intentional. This is part of the game design. So that they don't... The game itself is designed so that you can't just line up the shot and make them walk into it most of the time. You have to engineer that. You have to maneuver yourself into a position where they are forced to walk into your line of fire. So we're going to start looking for terrain options. Like I was saying earlier, okay, I see something right here. Uh, perhaps as we come around here, let me max out that field of view some more. There we go. Now we can see more of the terrain. You have this little ledge right here below us, and then another one just off to the right of center screen there. And with that little pile of boulders on the other side of it, let's go down here and have a look at it. We're going to try to bring them through right here. Yeah, natural choke point right here. Okay, check it out. Let's have a closer look at it. Wrong button, brain. Okay, here we go. Yeah, you have a nice little tunnel here where they may flow over the top of that ledge there, but still they have to come through this pass to get to you. So I'm going to put a smoke bomb in there, right? Ha. Oh, fuck. I, <laughs> I fucking fell. Brain. Oh, all right. Same thing, different spot, right? Let's try that again. I want to get them back in the same spot so I can show what I was talking about. few more up here. We may be able to kite them back around to basically reset in the same position. Alright. Now nah, see they've spread out so much. That's what they do, right? They fan out so that you have difficulty leading them into one spot. All right. Now we're basically right back where we were. Let's have a look. What I wanted to do before I fell off the cliff like an idiot, uh, I wanted to bring them down this little tight spot right down here. Okay. So we're going to try that one more time. Up right here. I may actually add an attractor to the mix. Let's draw them into that spot specifically. Then we'll be ready to put smoke bomb on them. Here it is. We'll put a smoke bomb in there. There we go. That's what I wanted. Just like that. Now, as they're milling around, they are coming into my line of fire already, automatically. It's usually faster to swap weapons than reload. Just make them come to you. Pick a spot. Make them come to you. There he is. And that kind of goes back into one of the tricks that I show. I've shown many times in other videos of uh, to get accurate shot placement. Just line up your crosshair and let them walk into it. But with this, we're going a step further and engineering a situation where they have to come around the corner and come into your line of fire. You don't have to you don't have to spray and pray and move around a lot. You're basically just keeping in one spot, letting them walk into it. That's it's the most effective way I know.
Okay, so let's go, like I was saying, uh, we'll load to before we did any of this, and we'll go down south and take a look at some of the bigger hordes down south. Oh, Thrash Monkey, I see your comment there. Here lately, you'll use the smoke bombs to control the battlefield. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, that was weird. I saw it look like we got a kill from that one smoke bomb, but generally the smoke doesn't kill them. I think maybe I hit him with the smoke bomb and it killed him. No, because I threw it and it hit the ground and he ran into it. So yeah, I don't know, dude, but I noticed that. It looked like we got a kill on uh, one of those freakers when we dropped that smoke bomb there. Okay. That is quite odd. All right, let's go down to Diamond Lake couple of big hordes down here we can fuck with. <laughs> Dad mode deactivated. What did I miss? Uh, well, we, you missed the blunt getting passed around, and there's a shot of whiskey waiting for you somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What time is it down here? It is 11.27 a.m. So one of my least favorite hordes in the game, actually, I would say, my least favorite horde in the game is the Mount Bailey horde. The reason for this, like we were just talking about terrain and using the terrain features to force them to walk into your line of fire. There are very, very few locations to do that around the Mount Bailey horde, especially if you take them during the day at their cave. Now, let me, s okay, we just loaded, so we're good. It would help. If I stopped hitting the wrong buttons. Now, we're taking them during the day and we've just reloaded so we have all of our supplies and our uh, flashbangs and our smoke bombs and all that stuff. So what I want to do, I want to try taking on a massive horde. This horde is 300 freakers strong. I want to take them out with basically the same tactics I've been showing, uh, using smoke bombs to get them into the entrance of the cave, Stuff like that. And I'll show you what I was talking about with there being so few uh, useful terrain features here if you take them up here by their cave. So you have little spots like this. You can do a little bit of good if you bring them around this corner, but look at how wide open it is and how low this is. They'll just flow off of this and drop down on you right here. And then they'll come around. Hang on one sec. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, I got your message, Joe. We'll take a look at that later. Thank you. Uh, but that's about it, man. You have this little narrow pass up here. But again, this is such a large horde. This is only one tight spot. And it's not very tight. It's a pretty wide opening there. Um, it's just the design of this horde, the terrain around it is what makes it so difficult. Like even here, you have a fairly good firing line here if you back them around this way. But... There's just so damn many of them. Uh, you would need like the MG55 with an extremely high fire rate to really control that opening. And even then, it's not that easy. They'll still come around you. If you can slip over here quietly enough, then you can use a flashbang, pull them out. That's just to get them in position or get them moving at least. Now I want them gathered up around my attractor. This is actually a really big horde. We'll go ahead and put a health bar up for them. Uh, should have a health bar up for them, right? Not daily horde. Maybe we got to kill some first. We just put a shitload of grenades in there, and you can see the grenades really aren't doing that much because there are so many of them. So we'll do a, a tractor bomb, get them gathered up and deal some damage. Now we know we have them gathered up there. 
So I want to put a couple of smoke bombs out. Let's smoke the whole, whole lot of them. And then go nuts with the Chicago Chopper. And you can see there are so many that even with the extreme fire rate and the high rate of penetration, they're still, it's really not doing that much good. There's just so damned many of them. You see that? Now that smoke bomb will cause some of them to slow down. Not very many. It's just, we've got about half of them now. Now, let's stop and take a look at the terrain around us. Okay. Even at this choke point behind us here, they're still fanned out. They're still like fanned out around the corner. There's not much you can do with a spot like that. So, what I like to do with this horde, this is one of the few I actually like to take them at night. It's actually easier to get these guys if you track them out in the wild and get them at a different location. <laughs> yeah, who fan, who fan, welcome in. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, right, this horde, they won't follow you very far either. Uh, so it's it can be tricky to lead them far enough to get to better terrain. Because there's a couple of little ledges you can take advantage of around there. But, uh... That's about it. So what we're going to do, I'm going to demonstrate why the time of day matters. Because y'all know, most of you will already know, I generally recommend ambushing the hordes where they sleep during the day. Camp till first light, ambush them at their cave. Either place mines, you know, make a, make a little kill zone outside the cave, or lead them to the mouth of the cave and use smoke bombs and heavy fire. Either way... But some hordes, that's actually not the best way to get them. Uh, simply because there's too many of them to be contained at that single location. So the spot where I like to get these guys is where they water. At nighttime, I like to come and get them down here on the southwestern edge of this pond here. Just right outside the bounds of uh, Diamond Lake Camp. Hold on, I got this. It can be tricky to get into position. And this is one of those things where it is advantageous to take your time and, and move quietly. And, you know, especially if you're doing like a live in the world type play style where you're actually, you know, taking it seriously. Okay. The horde is there. So let's try not to get their attention. I didn't expect them to be out so early, actually. Again, going quietly. We try not to wake them up. You can see they're really well clustered up over there. But where to engage them from? You have options. This this uh, brush here is too low. Doesn't actually count as concealment. Those are small bushes. And right here, you can kind of do some damage from here, but they will spot you. So where do you want to go to actually engage them? I think it's a little bit further back. There's like one patch of bushes around here somewhere that you can actually use. Here we go. No, even that is not suitable concealment. Are those militia friendlies? Those have got to be friendlies from the militias. Sorry, guys. <laughs> They're trying to trash friendly militia. But yeah, what I wanted to show is how tightly grouped up they are over there by the water. We're going to need a suppressor here. Here we go. This is it. This is what I was actually looking for. There is one singular patch here where you can... get them to group up at your throwables. You pull them away from the lake. That got their attention. That'll pull them away from the lake. And I'm going to pull them in a little bit further because your napalm molotovs can't be thrown as far. Look at that shit. Look at how many of them there are. Let's 
some grenades in there just because there's so damned many of them. And look, as those grenades make noise, it'll start to draw in more of them. Let's keep them gathered up right in here. Now we're getting some bigger numbers here. So let's go nuts with the heavy firepower. And there's still some down by the water. This is one of the reasons that I like to point out using things like flashbangs, because we have a bunch of them gathered up. You can still see there's a shitload of them down there by the water. Flashbangs are an easy way to get all of them coming. Now they're going to split off after this patrol again. I can almost guarantee it. Fuck, there they go. Well, there went our horde fight. Because now they're going to chase those assholes, and they may actually spot me and aggro on me. Okay, fair enough. Not yet. Nice. That actually worked pretty well. Okay, now yeah, we got more tractor bombs. <laughs> that was funny. many resources we've used. Just, hey, 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 none of that. Ah, uh, okay. The rest of them decided to wake up. Oh, this is what happened. Ah, ha, ha. damn screamers, man. Uh, ma'am. I'm gonna need you to not be alive anymore. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Is this the horde, or is this just the screamers, uh, the screamer swarm? Because I'll bet you there's still freakers down by the fucking lake. Yes, yeah, so the horde is still down by the lake. This is the thing about the Mount Bailey horde, man. I swear. Now, yes, I've seen Borislav's video uh, for how you can climb up on the tree. And uh, there is like a, a spot where you are basically invincible. There's a fallen tree that you can climb up here and lead them to uh, right here. That is a way to do it, but I prefer to understand the tactics rather than looking for spots where you're just completely invulnerable. There we go. <clears throat> so we're going to try to group up this... Uh, the ones from the Screamer, we're going to group them up with the rest of the horde down here by the lake. Because remember, what we're doing is we're still trying to take out this horde down here. And now they've started to disperse from the edge of the lake. They're kind of spread out. They're probably about to head up to their mass grave, their feeding site. Okay. So now we've got all of them grouped up. <clears throat> and I think there's a Marauder Patrol coming again or a Motorcycle Patrol of some sort. I see lights, yeah. Motorcycle headlights. Center screen there. All right, but what do we want to do with these people? These infected people, these sick people? One thing we can do is try to lead them this way. Let's make them come up this ledge. Again, they're just walking right into my line of fire. Really more? This fucking horde, man. Oh, I see. <clears throat> this is the rest of them walking off to their feeding site. Come on, Deacon, get up the hill, man. Get up the hill, man. Or don't. Whatever. Stand there and get hit in the face instead. Ah. 
so they get so scattered here. Come on. There we go. That was the last one from the horde. More? More. Okay. Mount Bailey horde, man. Always been my least favorite horde in the game. Like, I'd rather take on the sawmill horde all day long rather than the Mount Bailey horde. <clears throat> There's our late game save where we still have everything. Mm. Randall Smith, welcome in. Randall, hello. Lightning Rod 75, what's up? Oh, yeah, Lightning Rod. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's like certain spots are a little more believable. It's like, yeah, okay, you can climb up this spot and not be reached by the hordes. Um, and that's a perfectly valid way of doing it, too. Like driving up onto rocks and stuff, that's perfectly valid, man. Uh, if it lets you get over your fear of the hordes and complete the game and feel like you've reached completion, right on, man. Go for it. I I'm so glad that Borislav has made those videos to help people. Uh, in the community who are just really terrified of the hordes. But the point of most of the tactics that I show and the uh, the video that I just put out recently, if you guys don't know, I've released a video recently, uh, which is horde killing made easy, basically. It's the, the horde killing masterclass. The point of that video is to take pretty much everything that I know about killing hordes and share it with you to teach you the tactics and the mindset and show you how to get the best unlockables so that you can take on the hordes with superior tactics, superior firepower, and an absolute lack of fear. And just go in and use either smarts or overwhelming force, either way, whatever you're into. Or a bit of both, you know? So if you guys have not had that, if you've not seen that video, please do make a point of going over to check out the Horde Killing Masterclass video. You'll find it under just my most recently released videos. Oh, the link is there right on. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, okay, so uh, we got a little more time. Let's do one more thing. Now, I'm not going to promise I can pull this off smoothly, man. I haven't done this in a long time. Uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to go over here to the Iron Butte Horde and see if we can take out the Iron Butte Horde No Shots Fired. Uh, it's a technique I pretty much perfected early on when I, f not long after I first started playing Days Gone. Once I started to get the hang of it. <laughs> uh, no, man, I, uh, one of the Nitro Border, the, one of the reasons that I relate to this game so much is Deacon's sense of loyalty. Definitely. I, uh, one of the reasons I connected with this game in general was the fact that when Deacon was presented an opportunity to get a little side piece, he turned her down. Partly because she was trying to cheat on her own partner, uh, which he did not want to participate in, but also because he was still grieving for and still loyal to his late wife. Um... So yeah, that's one of the things that really impressed me about this game early on uh, was at that point in the story, they didn't just go the route of like The Witcher 3 or Mass Effect 3 and just, you know, let you bang all the side characters. And like the, ho the whole point of The Witcher 3, Mass Effect 3, games like that, you know you're playing those games trying to pick the right dialogue options to let you bang all the NPCs. That's that's what those games are for, you know. That's how those games are played. But uh, I was really impressed by this game when they did not go that route. It's one of the things that made it special to me. Whew. 
Here we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Deke is a real one. That's right. Uh, is Melissa heading out? All right. Good night, Melissa. We'll see you later. Okay. Now, again, I haven't done this in a while. It's late. I've had some whiskey. Fucking exhausted from work, man. We're doing harvest at work right now, uh, which is physically demanding. Uh, so I may actually fuck this up. <laughs> like the patented method that uh, got my channel noticed years ago. Ooh, can't drive worth a shit, but I think that was just funky terrain. That's what I get for drinking and driving, right? Well, there they are. Okay, so the way I like to do this, you can use things like this, these exploding log piles here, or the, these breakable log piles that have the orange straps around them. If you put some sort of explosive on those or take advantage of explosives near them, they'll, they'll break, they'll roll out, they'll trip a few of the freakers, slow down the front ranks. They'll get a few kills off of it too. So I like to use this uh, little trench here. This is a really good choke point here. And you have like two barrels in there that you can use. And it exits to this truck here, explosive fuel truck. And then you have a couple of other trucks along the way. This big guy over here. This big guy over here. Quite often, if we get them grouped up properly, that's all we need. But I tend to go ahead and set traps on these other trucks as well, just in case we need them. And we'll see if we can do this no shots fired. Um, I like to put a proximity bomb roughly here-ish so that several of them will move past that barrel and then trigger the bomb. And uh, so you'll get the double detonation of the bomb and the barrel. Same here. I like to put this more closer in so that it does not trigger the truck because I don't want this truck to go off until I detonate my remote bomb. So we'll put a remote bomb there. And for me, the, the most useful thing about the remote bombs they're really best for detonating other explosives the remote bomb does not do much damage by itself as you can see in the crafting recipe here uh one airbag one spark igniter one box of nails one piece of scrap there's no gunpowder in there there's no actual explosive uh to the remote bombs so they do not deal much damage by themselves they are best used with other explosives to detonate those uh, to set off a precisely timed detonation. You do need to make sure you uh, do not give the Freakers line of sight on you. If this horde sees you, they will aggro and come up out of their pit. So you have to make sure you break line of sight through this whole setup phase and keep your distance as best you can. And this should be all we need. Just in case, we will set up a, a little bit more. Give myself a little bit of breathing room in case I need to br bring them by uh, this truck back here. Mohammed, heading out? All right. Well, good evening. Thank you for being here. Okay. And that's a just in case. Now, notice the last thing I do is set the bomb that's going to be closest to the horde. 
I do that last because yeah, I don't want to get their attention too soon accidentally. Because again, like we discussed in the uh, Horde Killing Masterclass video, uh, as we discussed in that one, if they have line of sight on you, if, if a couple of them are just facing your direction, they may see you and they will alert the rest of the Horde through their hive mind connection. So now I want to go to this. And again, we're trying to maintain a, you know, broken line of sight. We'll put a bomb there. Then I'm not going to bother with the tractors because they're already bumped up in their little pit down there. Put one right here at the mouth of it so they have to walk through it. And put a total of four just off in the middle of them. And now we're going to get moving. Now we have to go with tractors. We're just going to run them past all of this. That'll do damage as it goes. Get an attractor here by the truck. Break line of sight. Once they start to gather up around that truck, they get clustered up around the truck nice and neat. Then we're going to pop the truck. That did massive damage to them. Now I'm also going to get them here and here as they try to cross that fence. Again, for massive damage, we'll take the rest of them around here to our next remote bomb. Almost done. You can use focus mode, not just for firearms. You can also use it to place your throwables more accurately. So they have an attractor on that truck. And you just watch and wait for them to gather up there. Once they start to break away from it, that's when you pop them. We didn't really get that many with it, did we? All right, so we're going to put another one right here again using focus mode to place it right up and under the truck, right where we want it. They'll gather up around that one. Again, we're going to break line of sight. Break line of sight, create distance. Wait for them to get gathered up. Then we can set it off right when we want to. Almost like we planned it that way, huh? Oh, well, I'm glad I didn't fuck that up. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done that. But I think that right there, the Iron Butte Horde no shots fired method that I did years ago, got noticed by Sam Whitwer, got shared on his Twitter, made my channel blow up overnight. That one horde kill right there shows almost all of the most effective tactics. Uh, using the attractors to get them grouped up, using the remote bombs to detonate other explosives at just the right time. Uh, breaking line of sight, using the terrain, using the tools, it's all there. And we didn't fire a single shot to take out 300 freaks. That's the kind of shit that makes horde killing look easy. And to me, that's the kind of shit that makes horde killing fun. You know, that's what, that's exactly what really made me fall in love with this game initially was the fact that players can come up with that kind of stuff and do it that way if they want to. You can go in guns blazing and run and gun through the whole thing with the MG-55. Or you can sneak in and just take them out with traps and, you know, set up kill zones and take them out your way. My way. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I got for tonight, man. Uh, I'm ready to shut this down and hang out with my girl for a bit. Uh, thank you all for being here. I need to thank all the folks who contributed this evening. Uh, we had uh, Baraffi uh, made a contribution. Baraffi uh, bought some memberships and gifted out those memberships. Uh, Selby Miser gifted some memberships. Uh, so I think that's awesome. You guys get to uh, you guys get to benefit from that. That's uh, things that keep the community growing. Uh, that is always appreciated. And now you individuals get to uh, enjoy. You know, 10 individuals get to enjoy a month of memberships. Uh, let's see. What else do I have? It is currently Friday evening, so we're done for the weekend. Uh, Claire will be back on first thing Monday morning. Uh, you still playing Days Gone Monday through Thursday? Yes, Monday through Thursday, Claire will be playing some more Days Gone. You get, get some more Days Gone fix at 8 a.m. Mountain Time on the 8-Bit Terror channel. That is located... Uh, right there. Here's a link to the 8-Bit Terror channel in the chat. Uh, yeah. More days gone. 8 a.m. Mountain Time, Monday morning. And Friday, she's actually playing Fallout 76. So if you folks have been watching the series, uh, if you're if you're new to Fallout, or if you're a fan of Fallout, uh, or if you're just watching, you know, just, just coming to it because of the series, 
Uh, check out Claire playing uh, Fallout 76. It's a it's a really unique experience in the Fallout world, uh, and she is having a blast with it. Uh, she's played a few hours of it this afternoon and had a good time, uh, and we'll probably end up playing some over the weekend, I hope. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's all I got, man. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you all just for being here, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Buttons? Uh, where's the back button now, babe? There it is. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Later, guys.